And now without any further delay, let's begin today's event, Close More Loans and Improve Profitability Now, sponsored by Credit Expert and hosted by National Mortgage News. I'd like to introduce your moderator for today, and that is Mike Perkowski. With that, Mike, the floor is yours. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's web seminar. We're glad you could take a little bit of time out of your busy day to learn more about the topic, Close More Loans and Improve Profitability Now. Before we go any further, I do want to take a moment to again acknowledge and thank Credit Expert for their sponsorship of this program. We really appreciate their support. Our main presenter today is Dawn Wery. Dawn is on the customer experience team at Credit Expert. She has a wealth of experience in this industry. She's going to share a lot of best practices, tips, and ideas to help you and your organization close more loans and improve profitability. She also has uh, two special guests who are going to work with her as well and providing a lot of insight. So let's get the program started. I'm going to turn it over to our main presenter. That's Dawn Wary. Dawn, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Um, so it's nice to have everyone. I will reiterate what he said in terms of thanking you guys for taking time out of your day. We're excited to be able to talk with you. Um, as he said, we have two guest speakers today, Ben and Todd. You can see information. I'll talk about them in just a moment a little bit more. Um, but what we wanted to do is make sure we had a well-rounded panel of folks to talk about today's topic. So, you know, credit experts, uh, we, we have software that helps with credit improvement plans, and that's the most I'm going to say about us. Um, ben and Todd both are in the field experience from us loan origination and mortgage industry qualification department perspective. So that gives us a lot of different perspectives, both in terms of the tools and those who use them or put them in place at their organizations to really talk about how we improve the loan process. So Ben is actually an author, I'll show you in a moment, in addition to being a loan originator. And Todd, as you can see, is the Director of Qualification Support at a Southwestern Mortgage Company and has 15 years experience having built a credit qualification department. And as I promised, Ben, in addition to being a, a loan officer, also has come up with this book, The Top 1%. I'm sure he will be happy to tell you because I've heard him say a million times he's not an author. Um, he did this because he has created his own process to help improve the loan origination process. So Ben and Todd, is there anything else you'd like to add in about yourselves before we get into the topic? Well, this is Ben. Uh, thanks for saying that. I'm certainly, I, I'm definitely no author. Uh, this book was really just put together to, to uh, speak on how a lot of the top 1% of loan originators think. And I think a lot of people on this call are um, maybe middle management or um, you know not on not in the streets originating. Um, so really, that's that's what I'm here to speak about. And that is one of the things that Ben Todd and I have talked about um, in just preparing for this. That you get both this management and, and loan origination perspective, and whichever side we're on, we hope you get to see the perspective from both. So. Um, the important thing here is everything we're going to talk about today is really best practices that we've seen in the industry to help improve the loan origination process, make it more systematic, and make it something that you're doing the same way every time, repeatability, so that you can improve your profitability and, and measure your, your productivity. So, um, uh, as I said, credit experts. Our, our mission is really to connect people with their dream homes faster or more often. We do that through the software tools that we have. But the important part, and, and I think something we probably all share on this call, is it's not just about the process, it's about the end result, helping people connect with those dream homes. So today, what we're going to cover is we're going to start with a little bit of a market overview. I hate to start into a process without at least talking about why we're doing it and what's happening in the market because that always impacts what we should all be doing every day. So we'll start talking about the market. And then we're going to talk about credit and why credit is important. It's a very key part of closing every loan and what we're going to focus a lot of our talk on today. 
Then we'll talk about the process. So that's when we'll really get the, the rubber hits the road. What is it that we're suggesting that you consider doing? And then talk about some best practices in that process. So with that, let me talk about the market. And uh, I'll be curious to hear what you're seeing as well. Um, we'll start with Ben and Todd, and then there will be a poll question coming. So you probably are all feeling very good about the market. I know I am right now because we have the highest origination volume that we've had in three years. Why? Low interest rates. And I know we've seen quite a shift from uh, just new mortgages to refis. Um, so that refi volume, now that it, it's actually worth refinancing for a lot of folks, is even increasing the origination volume more. So those two things combined, we're seeing great origination volume. Even nicer, it's not just volume, it's also profitability. So some of these came from Housing Wire and the MBA, uh, if you've been reading either one of those. So this past quarter, the average profitability per loan was almost $2,000, $1,924. Compare that to a quarter earlier with $1,675, and last year, this quarter, would have been negative $200, so you were actually losing money. So this is a lovely place to be in. You've got higher volume, more profitability per loan. You're probably feeling pretty good about it. Um, the third sort of leg of that stool is the origination cost. So why are we more profitable? Because we've increased volume, as we said, but we're also finding better ways to be more efficient with our origination costs. So this all adds up to a market that's feeling very good, very profitable, perhaps even very easy right now. So Ben and Todd, can I ask you, what are you seeing in the market? Do you see this? Anything you'd add to it? No, I, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this. Yeah, we're definitely, you know, seeing increased refinance. But, you know, for me and my group, we're still focused heavily on the purchase business and um, seeing a lot of demand out there for that still. Absolutely. We're seeing the same thing. Uh, it's, it's still a, a nice purchase market out there. Lots of opportunities to help borrowers get to get into a home. And how, how are you thinking about helping those borrowers get into the home right now? I know we'll talk about it more, but since you mentioned it. Well, well we have a process set up to help any credit challenge borrower uh, uh, qualify, whether it be short term or long term. Uh, the borrowers, uh, every borrower is just a little bit different. So when we do a credit review, we then uh, put that borrower on a path depending on what they're able to do to, to qualify, whether it be they're qualifying in three days or they're qualifying in two months. That's terrific. So, no, so even though you've got a whole line of folks behind them, it sounds like you're still focusing on helping the credit challenge customer. We are. We can't just let that borrower leave because we've spent so much money to get them in the door. So uh, in order for us to really try to capture every opportunity, we want to create an automated system with low uh, human labor and, and uh, high rewards, which is basically good technology and uh, good communication with the consumer. That's great. And we'll talk, we'll dive into more about that uh, as we go forward, because as you know, this is really about the process. but. It really is an important thing to say when and, and where is the right time for a process like this. So with that, I'm going to turn it to Mike. Great, thanks. Dawn, appreciate it. And as, uh, as Dawn mentioned, uh, we have several polling questions. The first one does relate to the up market that Dawn described. So in this up market, what scenario best describes how you meet loan closing goals? Do you spend time to maximize all leads because you want to close every loan you can? Or do you focus on the easy to convert clients mostly so you can make your numbers? Which of these two best describes the way you and your organization going about the, uh, the loan closing process? So we're gonna let everybody have a few seconds to select the one answer that works best for them and their organization. So it just click on the radio button there to select your answer, and then please click on the submit button. 
And in a moment, we're going to share the results with you. I'm going to uh, ask uh, Dawn just to give her take on it, and then we'll continue with the rest of our program. All right, I think everybody's probably had a chance to make their selection, so let's see what you say. All right, so nearly two-thirds of you, almost 64% say you spend time to maximize all leads because you want to close every loan you can. Dawn, does that surprise you? Yes and no, <laughs> um, and I'll tell you why. So what we are seeing a lot in the market, and I'll be interested to hear Ben and Todd's take on this as well, is that a lot of folks are just letting their hard-earned leads go um, because they've got a whole list, list of folks behind them ready to do a, a mortgage. Um, so in that way, yes, it surprises me, but on the flip side, the fact that you're here at this webinar tells me you're interested in closing more loans. So I think in some ways we've also self-selected to have a, an audience that's more likely to be looking to close every loan, and I think that's terrific. Ben and Todd, what are you seeing outside of your own organization? You know, I, I'm not really surprised. I do think a lot of people would be surprised at the day-to-day -day actions by their loan originators. I think when things get really, really busy, um, I, I think it's hard for people not in the street to understand all the different roles that a loan originator is carrying, and I think – you'll see that, you know, there's two types of loan originators. You know, you've got the top producers that systemize everything, but you've also got the average originator. And unfortunately, I, I think a lot of the average originators are just trying to gobble up whoever's the easiest to convert. And a lot of those that aren't, aren't easily converted go to the wayside. That's a, a great point. I love how you talked about the average versus not, because I think we all want to not be, we want to be above average. We want to be that star originating more loans. A lot of loan officers will focus on the low-hanging fruit, because sometimes working with a borrower, whether it be communicating directly on what they need to do on their credit or trying to send out emails, it can be difficult. And the time that they spend working with the borrower that trying to help get their score up, a lot of times they feel like they can just work with the new borrowers that come in because they're going to look at what's right ahead of them. And what they're not seeing is that, is that helicopter view of loans down the line that they're not going to be uh, closing because they're not willing to work with the borrower or have a process set up to work with the borrower. And that really, to that point, that brings me to our point of view. Should you focus on the easy leads, because there are tons, or every lead? And we say that even in an up market, it's important to close every loan and get the best deal for your customers, and, and for the reasons that we just said, right? So partly, it's maximizing your ROI on your investment, right? So first of all, you've paid money to bring those leads in. Well, let's convert them. Otherwise, it's a waste of your money. Um, but you're also getting more for that. There's probably less competition for leads because there are people letting those leads go. Um, you're also getting higher, this the highest revenue per loan in years. So the better, the more conversion you do, the higher revenue you get versus times when they were maybe times were tougher. Um, and to the point you just made, preparing for the next downturn as well, right? You're building referrals. So it's not just the business you didn't get today. It's the business you're not going to get from that person or from their referrals over and over again. And they're going to remember and they're going to come back to you if, if you've treated them well and helped them even in the sub market. It's also a great time to optimize your process. So you've, you've got some time to play with it so that when you're in a downturn, your process is already functioning, ready to go and optimized. So let me uh, turn it over to Mike again for another poll. Great. Thanks, Dawn. So the next question, we'd like to know how the market is treating you. And can you let us know how many leads does your company convert? Do you convert between 0 and 30% of your leads, between 30 and 60% of your leads, or do you convert more than 60% of your leads? Again, which one best describes uh, the loan conversion ratio at your organization between 0 and 30%, between 30 and 60%, or over 60%. Again, this should be one that I think everybody just needs a few seconds to 
select their answer, click on that radio button, and click on the submit. And we're going to share the results with the audience and then move on from there. Okay, so two thirds of you say that your organization is converting between 30 and 60%. Interesting, one in nine of you say your organization is converting more than 60% of your leads. Good for you. Uh, Dawn, did these ratios uh, surprise you at all, or was what you were thinking? Um, they don't surprise me. I'm curious, Ben and Todd, your experience, not necessarily within your own organization, but in general, what would you say? Does that surprise you? You know, industry average, good. You know, and I think, I think it really depends on what you mean by lead. You know, if you're buying leads from a lead provider, that yields you one set of conversion rates. But, you know, from credit to closing, you know, I think industry average, if somebody could get to 25% of those, then that was considered a win. Now, keep in mind, that, only, that not only, you know, takes into account credit-challenged people who can't purchase right now, but it's also people who decide not to purchase at this time or they choose to go with a different lender, or whatever happens. But 25% has kind of been the industry norm for quite some time. Uh, I think 30 to 60 is phenomenal. And I'd say over 60 is really phenomenal. <laughs> I agree with what Ben said. 30 to 60, or, or 25% is, is, you know, 25, 30% is, is really what I've seen um, as far as the conversion rate. Um, and, and especially when he mentioned the difference in the leads, depending on where you're getting your lead, whether you're monitoring your own database or you're purchasing leads from a Zillow, you are going to have a different conversion rate. Um, but that being said, I mean, we got to convert everything we can. That's 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 what we're that's why we're in the business. Right. Well, and what I think is interesting. And I'm, I'm never surprised by the data because I've seen this question um, in the past. Um, even if you're at 25 or 30 percent industry average or slightly above industry average, again, this is a bit of a self-selecting group and that, that you're interested in it, um, that's still a lot of leads that you're not converting that you might be able to convert. And so just having an incremental improvement in that is going to greatly improve your profitability as well as your um, productivity. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the challenges to closing every loan. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and put a couple we've seen, and then again, I'm going to ask Ben and Todd to, to add to that. So some of the things we see is just day-to-day -day mortgage industry realities, and this is common. Everybody's busy. There are a lot of other things going on. Where do you focus your time day to day? Um, the mortgage industry changes. It feels like hourly sometimes. So with the mortgage industry constantly changing and all these different priorities, is closing loans the top priority um, every day for everyone? Um, one thing we've seen is loan officers are great at closing loans. They're fantastic at relationships but they may not be experts on every single factor that impacts it. You know, we talk a lot about credit, not surprisingly. That's a great example where not everybody understands the ins and outs of credit. So, there, but there are a lot of factors that loan officers may not understand every single detail of. Again, they're experts at relationships and closing. And then uh, the last thing that we're seeing a trend on is uh, consumer credit. So even though overall scores have been on the rise for years and, and really uh, very high compared to historic norms, there's still issues with credit, whether that's people who have low or no credit. And certainly um, there's all sorts of talk about millennials and how that's changing. So different groups as they come in, um, lots of different challenges on consumer credit, even though the overall, the average is up. So let me ask Todd and Ben, any other things you'd say or challenges you see to actually taking that 30% or 25 to 30% average and getting it higher? Yeah, I think, you know, taking a systematic approach um, for loan officers can, uh, I mean, really help their conversion. And what I mean by that is that as loan officers are constantly scattered, we know that, 
I mean, you know, they're, they're marketers, they're advertisers, they're on the phone with realtors, they're, you know, pre-qualifying clients. Uh, I think the average loan officer is very quickly tries to figure out, can this deal close, yes or no? And unfortunately, if the answer is no or even not yet, they're just moving on to the next one. And, you know, they need a system that works behind the scenes without their input. Um, you know, something they can click a couple buttons, perhaps, and, you know, a whole list of things um, will be done for that client that hopefully if they can't get them into a house today, maybe they could get them into a house, you know, a couple of months from now or even a year from now because we need that loan at that time too. And unfortunately, I just think that loan officers get inundated with the casualty of the day or the bright, shiny object of the day, and that's where they're spending a lot of their, their focus. Tom, any other challenges you see? Yeah, you know, some of the challenges that I see, and even with credit, it's not always the credit score that's impacting the borrower. It could be an automated underwriting finding, which we could potentially correct. So part of having a qualification department is not only helping uh, improve the score and the borrower's overall uh, uh, ability to qualify, but it's also looking at their findings and making sure that if we are doing something to help them, then it doesn't actually hurt them. And that's where having tools in place and a system in place will really help. The tools are in place because let's say the borrower has an account that technically should have fallen off the report already. Um, well, if we're going to try and have that done through some type of rescore, I want to make sure that that's not going to put them into a different scorecard and have a negative impact on their score. So uh, again, it's being able to constantly use the tools to find out um, even if it's not score related, how can we help that borrower? It's, it's interesting to hear Todd talk about that because as you see, the loan officers are experts at closing loans but not necessarily experts at every factor. And it's a good point. You could actually do harm when you're trying to be helpful. So, so to that point, and we've talked about credit um, a couple of times, but one of the big reasons we talk about credit is because it is, according to the HIMSA data, uh, the latest, the top reason for denial in some way, shape, or form. And as we just said, it's not necessarily credit score. It might be just credit ratio, et cetera. So there are a number of credit things that can impact whether someone can get a loan. Um, the other thing that's important is if you aren't able to give your applicant the best uh, loan possible, the best rate, et cetera, um, they could go to competition, right? So part of the reason for that 25 to 30% average um, in terms of uh, lead conversion is because your lead immediately gets marketed to elsewhere. And so if you can't give them the best loan, someone else will. Trigger leads will, will help you lose your, your lead quite quickly. So given that, what is up? Uh, I'll let, let my guess the, the question. That's okay, Don. No problem. So since we're talking <laughs> about credit, let's have a uh, polling question. This is our third and final polling question on the topic of credit. Specifically, can you tell us if credit is an issue, how does your company decide what to do next? And we're going to give you four choices, and please select the one choice that best describes what your company is most likely to do next when credit is an issue. Do you have cascading logic built into the initial credit pull, which tells you what to do next? Is it a judgment call by the MLO? Is it a judgment call by the MLO's manager? Or is it all of the above? Again, once uh, we'd like to know if credit is an issue, how does your company decide what to do next? Which one best describes uh, the course of action that your organization takes? Have cascading logic built into the initial credit pull, judgment call by the MLO, judgment call by the MLO's manager, or all of the above. So by now, I think everybody knows the drill. When you have the option that you would like to select, click on the button, then click on submit. And I think everybody's had an opportunity to make their choice now, so let's see what the numbers look like. Okay, so more than a third of you, 36%, say that your organization does all of the above. 
And uh, the same amount actually says that it's a judgment call specifically by the MLO. And then smaller percentages, uh, judgment call by the MLO's manager, and the use of cascading logic. Okay, um, Dawn and, uh, and our other guests, anything uh, take away from this one? This doesn't shock me at all, and it's why we're here, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so what we see a lot of and um, where we've even come to this point is that it depends. It's usually a judgment called by the loan originator, um, or maybe they sometimes ask their management, or maybe they sometimes have a – that there's not one way to do it, and that that's actually part of the concern because, as we said, your MLO may or may not have the expertise you need for credit or any other issue. Um, Tom, Ben, anything you'd like to add to that? This does not shock me. No, this doesn't shock me at all. I do think a lot of people would be very surprised if they went into the offices of their loan officers and, uh, and, and watched them for a day. Uh, I do think that a lot of middle management would be quite surprised at how quickly they move on uh, just because time is of the essence uh, and they don't have a system. My, my view is it should never be a judgment call. There should be a process and a system and it, and it shouldn't be judgment. And if it is judgment, it should be based what's on, on what's in the credit profile. Meaning I have a borrower at 615 and they have the ability to get to 630 by adding $10 to a revolving account. Um, so it, it should never be a, a judgment call, but there should be a way to have a process to move the file along so that it doesn't have to be a judgment call. And that's actually exactly why we're here. So as I said, when I see this, this is where this process concept comes up, is because we know that it's often a judgment call by the MLO, by the MLO's management, perhaps not really a systematic process that says, if something happens, this is what we're going to do about it. If, if the report says this, this is what happens. And that's what we're trying to suggest. So um, how might you handle it if you've got somebody who does have a credit issue? Um, first thing we'd say, we've got the, our do's and don'ts, things you should or shouldn't do if someone's credit is keeping them from getting that best loan and keeping you from converting that loan. Um, first, we'd say don't use credit repair. Um, often that is a temporary fix. It's something that's disputing things that maybe are valid. Um, so we wouldn't suggest doing that. Um, we'd also say don't guess on how changes might impact a score. I think Todd said it earlier that you may actually do more harm than good. Um, and comp credit is a complex thing. It's not something that the same thing works the same way for everyone. So without doing some, some tools and such, you're not going to really know what the impact is. And then we've said it a couple times already, don't assume every loan originator is equipped to recommend credit improvement actions and don't leave it up to them to do it. Instead, what we'd say is, Give your, your loan originators and processors access to tools. So as I said, credit's complex. Give them the tools to really understand what will make an impact. Or take it a step further. Don't just give them the tools, but set up that process company-wide that whenever credit needs improvement and falls within specific criteria, this process runs automatically. Um, the reason we do this, obviously, some of it is just common sense, um, but we've also seen this in action. So we have worked with a number of top lenders, and we found that when they implement a more systematic process, rather than leaving it up to their MLOs, um, their list, they lift their closing rates by 40% or more. So let me repeat that, because <laughs> it's an important point they get 40% more loans closed because they have an expert credit process or more. So if I'm you, I'm probably thinking, well, what does that look like and how do I do that? <laughs> and so let me compare and contrast typical process. And I will say everybody's process is different. So 
there's not a one size fits all where I can just hand you a booklet and say, here you go, here's how to run the process. Um, I think it's incredibly important in any process to really customize it to your needs and your way and even your criteria. I would hope everyone on this phone has different criteria for what they look at when they talk about a loan. It may be similar, but is tweaked to themselves. But typically what we've seen is that an applicant authorizes you to pull their credit. The credit score is high enough to qualify, either qualify for the mortgage or for the mortgage rate they're looking for. If it is, great. Proceed to loan origination, close it done. If not, then as we said, the loan officer uses their judgment on what's the best thing to do. And that's what we're saying. You really don't want to leave it up to them. Instead, the expert credit process adds the blue boxes here. So you authorize the credit pull, it's high enough. No, instead of handing it or letting your loan officer just decide what to do, maybe send them to credit repair or just guess at what the right answer is. Instead, they send it to a centralized credit department. Somebody who's a specialist, whether it's a specialist or a whole department of them, that knows credit inside and out, that has really learned it, has the tools, understands it. They then specifically work with the tools, the loan officer, and the applicant to get the credit where it needs to be and then return it back to the loan officer when the score is high enough to qualify to actually close the deal. So again, really you're just adding a, a little bit of a, I call it kind of a detour, that says instead of just winging it and guessing, you're gonna have a specific set of criteria that says when this happens, specialists are gonna look at it, try and improve it, and we're gonna go ahead and close the deal. So that all sounds lovely in theory. What are the keys to setting up a, an expert credit process? Um, First and foremost, it starts with the process. I see a lot of people who try to jump right into what tools do I need. But the first thing you always need to do is define what's the process. When's the file gonna go to a specialist? Who initiates it? When's it go back to the loan officer? What are the criteria? Um, how often do we wanna do that? Are there times we don't want it to go to them? You really need to think about what's the process first. And that's something we can help you think through. Then, how am I gonna staff the department? Who's doing it? So define the process as kind of what are we doing? Staff the department is who's doing it. Um, one of the biggest concerns I hear, in fact, I talked to someone earlier today about it, um, is I don't have the staff, I don't have the team to do it. Um, one of the great things is this is something you can start very small. In fact, most companies really do start with one person, often someone who's already on their staff doing this part time, and then when they get the return on investment and have really honed the process, they expand it to, to get the, the benefit of all that results. So starting small would be our recommendation so you can really hone it, figure out your process, tweak it a little bit, and then expand. And as I said, that's usually with someone already on your team. Um, then how are you gonna do it? What types of tools do you need to support it? Um, throughout the process, whether it's in improvement plans or how you repull the credit, et cetera. Um, does the client need any tools? Is the tools just for the loan originators or is it also for the client? And then probably the most important piece is measuring the benefits, um, keeping track of your process and the results from it so that you know what to change and whether to expand or stop it, whether it's working for you. And really, if you think about it, there's a lot of detail within those four, but it's a fairly straightforward process to create. It's define the process, staff the department, select the tools, and measure the benefits, and then continue tweaking until you've optimized it perfectly. So let me ask Ben and Todd, since you both set up processes like this, um, whether it's credit specific or not, what was the biggest challenge you had and what benefits did you see from the processes you set up? Well, this has been, um, you know, just speaking about general processes, just having a, if this, then that. And what I found is that, you know, everybody just wants education. Uh, they want to, they, it seems like today's buyer has a thirst, thirst for knowledge. And whether that's on the credit part or just, the home buying process, whatever it is, staying in touch and educating them 
all along the way will yield to better and better results. Even if we can't close their loan today, like I said earlier, we need that loan down the, down the line as well. And we've already paid the money to have them come in the, the front door. So uh, you know, we need to maximize our conversion that way as well. Ben, I think you're speaking to an audience that gets the idea of thirsty for knowledge or they wouldn't be here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Todd, any thoughts? Yeah, you know, for me, it was being able to set up the right infrastructure in order to be successful. Um, and, and that was just like you said, first defining a manual process and then figuring out how we can make automate the manual process. And if you start small, and you can um, automate as much, have a good CRM system. You're able to, your bandwidth is much higher, um, and eventually you will grow. Um, but for me, it was really just creating that infrastructure, creating the right communi automated communication. Um, because let's face it, I, I can't. Over time, you have more and more borrowers because you have more coming in that have problems. So you need to be able to have some type of drip campaign or something to stay in contact with that consumer but not necessarily have to reach out every time. Um, and then being able to have a drill down as to, it, you know, I have a, a plan where if it's a, a one week, three week, four week plan, whatever it is, they fall into a different bucket and then that borrower um, will go through a different uh, system, you know, technology, or CRM. It will go through a different campaign depending on how long we feel it's going to take them to qualify. And then we can also get some reporting based on when we change the disposition of that lead in the system. It's funny because as I hear Todd talk about that, I hear all four points here, right? So define the process. He's actually defined different processes depending on who you are and what your, your criteria are. He talked a little bit about the infrastructure, which I would assume includes your stuff. Um, the tools, one of the tools he's using is CRM. Um, and then even having that reporting back, which is the measuring the cost and the benefits. So nice job going right across my talking points there. <laughs> but what you can see is that may be perfect for him. It may not have been perfect for Ben setting up the same process. So understanding how that process works for you, what your tools are, what your infrastructure looks like, what reports you care about is really critical. And so let me tell you some of the questions we hear from folks a lot as we introduce this concept. Um, some are questions, some are concerns, right? So where should our loan originator send the file? Should it be to a credit specialist, a credit department? Should it just be that we give them the tools, et cetera? Um, what should they or the specialist say or not say to the consumer? Um, and we're going to show in a moment some examples of communications. Um, I think Todd mentioned that he has some automated communications, and so we'll, we'll show you some examples um, of that. So how do we know whether the consumer is even engaged? Um, that's something that you'll have to think about. How do we understand that? Do, do we have them agree something? Do we email back and forth about this plan? Do, do we have a certain amount of time where if they're not responding, we, we decide they're done? Um, how do we measure cost and results? And again, we'll show you some examples of the cost and the results. And then do we offer some sort of internal incentive to, to run the process? So those are some of the common questions. We hear a number of different questions about how do I set up the process, who should be running it, how many people, how big should it be, et cetera. And so we'll try to address a few of these in the, the next slide. And so as I promised, there are a lot of samples. <laughs> um, and we have more of them um, for those who are interested in this type of process for themselves. Uh, the first is a sample of a couple of tools. Ben mentioned a different, right, I'm sorry, I think it was Todd who mentioned a different one, which is the CRM system. Um, but in this case, these happen to be uh, credit improvement plan tools. So the one on the top left is Wayfinder, and the one on the bottom right is Credit Expert What If Simulator. Those are tools that you can use to help your borrower uh, have an improvement plan, a credit improvement plan, so to help develop one for them. Um, there could be other types of tools like repo tools, et cetera, that you might decide need to be part of your process. Again, that's custom for everyone. 
Um, we're going to now show two slides about tracking. And as I said, it's probably the most important part. There's no reason to run the process if you don't track whether it's helping you. Um, so this is an example of a detailed view where someone's tracking what's the impact they got. So you look at the file, um, then you see what their current mid score is, what their target mid score is to get them into a better mortgage rate or even just into a loan at all. Um, did they reach the target, yes or no? So how long did it take? What tools were used? In this case, between essentials, what is simulate a rapid rescore and, and report repulse? Um, and in the end, what did it cost between different types of costs? So being able to have this information and keeping all that detail, you can start to get what was the return on my investment? How many loans did I close that I wouldn't have closed if not for this process? From that data, you can get this kind of summary view. And again, everybody's got different tools. If you've got a CRM system you rely on, you might be able to run this um, through that. This is actually just done in an Excel spreadsheet, so a little bit more manual, right? So here I can see a summary of those same results, right? How many units of different um, products did I use? What was the cost of using those tools? Um, what was my total cost when I consider everything? Um, what was my cost per loan? How many actually achieved that, et cetera. So you can start to get the data to put together a return on investment. Let me ask uh, Ben and Todd, how do you track the results of your loan processes? You know, I'm, this is Ben, I'm pretty simple. Uh, I, you know, I track um, credit pools to closings, and that's a real easy conversion. That number's either going up or it's going down. Um, in the CRM, you can also track how many people are on campaigns. And I have just found that there's a direct correlation to those conversion numbers going up to the number of people that are engaged in a campaign. So that, that's for Ben. What about you, Todd? Well, we have custom fields within our CRM that I can get reportable. So I, I track the score trend, whether it's up or down, um, how many days in between the time in which we pulled credit, um, and we don't really track the cost. I mean, we do in our credit system. I don't track the cost within our CRM at this time, but I love that idea because um, it really does give you your actual ROI um, because right now we're just closing the loan and moving on. Um, I'm just giving them like closed loan versus application, those types of numbers. So I think I am going to make some changes so that I can do more of a cost analysis as well. That's terrific. And what I love about what the two of you just talked about, first of all, it reinforces, and part of the reason for those on the phone that I keep going back to Ben and Todd for some input is everybody's different. The process is a little bit different for everyone, and so I want you to, to see that flavor. Um, but also just the fact of thinking about the different things you can track. So one uh, thing you can track is cost and, the, and, and re return on investment. But I love what Ben said. He's tracking how a campaign links to his return on investment and his closure rate. So he's able to see that certain activities lead to that, and that's fantastic as well. So it really depends on what you want to look at. So other thing that I just wanted to show is um, I do have uh, this tool if anybody wants to see personally what they might be able to expect. Um, where we can put in some data for you, and it's basically helping calculate what kind of return you might expect. And as you see, these are all sliders, so we can play with it. So it really looks at your current process, assuming you have the typical process where it's decentralized and a loan originator or their management um, decides what to do on a case-by-case -case basis. You can look at how many loan officers you've got, um, how many loans they're closing per month, how big those are and profitable those are. Um, and then you can compare that to having a centralized process. So how many folks would you plan to staff? What's the cost? Um, what's the cost of per loan file to use the tools that you might use? Um, how much would you expect the closure rate to lift? And as you see, if you look at it, these are fairly either average or conservative numbers. So for instance, we see closing rates 
of 40% or more, I put 20% additional in this one. You'll see the average profit per loan, if you remember back to the original uh, slides, the ones early on, is exactly what the average is right now in the, the industry. So if you play with these numbers, you can start to see how much should your assets, your profits increase, what's the cost to get there, because that's always a question I have is, or I hear is, what's it going to cost me to do this process? and what your return on investment should be. So the fairly straightforward calculation to at least estimate what you would expect. And so with that, that really uh, basically closes up what we wanted to present, and, and we're going to open it up for questions in a minute. The big thing that I'd like to close with is just to let you know, again, there are multiple options. I think it's been quite clear here that it really is a process that can be customized for you. It can be sized and scaled to different folks. Um, and we can help you pick and set up the best process for you. Um, specifically, Credit Expert, we're actually trying to hone this a little bit more. And so we're looking for, actively looking for lenders to be pilots with us in this process. And so we're willing to put some resources toward it to help you set up that process. Um, in exchange for you piloting it and helping us uh, develop even more information about it. So if this is something you'd like to learn more about and might be interested in piloting with us, please schedule a 15-minute consultation with us. and We're happy to go through it in more detail, see if that makes sense. And so uh, we're going to head into Q&A. I believe Mike had uh, some closing comments as we do that. Yes, we do. And uh, before we get into the questions, I do want to remind everyone that there's a lot of uh, interesting and valuable resources for you uh, to, re to refer to on the uh, check out the resources uh, widget on the bottom right corner. There's uh, a white paper, an infographic, and a video, all of which very relevant to what we've been talking about here today. We certainly invite you um, after the program uh, to download any of those, and hopefully they'll give you a lot of uh, insight above and beyond what you've already got here. All right, great. Let's start to get into our questions now in the remaining time that we have. Uh, Dawn, the first question is for you. Our audience member wants to know, how do I know if I have access to the tools I need to do this? That's a great question. So um, first of all, you have to start by figuring out what tools you need. Um, but typically, the tools you would get through your credit report provider. And so you can actually speak with them directly. And in fact, we're actually happy usually to, we're happy to help you and the CRA work together to set up these types of pilots. And that could be part of it is figuring out if you have the tools. But it really comes from the credit report providers. OK, great. Uh, let's go to Todd for our next question. Todd, our audience member, wants to know, why would I want to invest in this process now that the market is up? Why wouldn't you? Just because the market is up doesn't mean it's always going to be up. And now is the time that you create that loan incubation center for, for when it does slow down. I know typically in November and December they're slow, and we're not seeing that this year. At least we're not. Hopefully you guys aren't either. Um, but who's to say what's going to happen next November? Um, so you want, to be able, you, you want to be able to really, like I said, capture every opportunity. There's really no reason not to have a process. Uh, ben, let's go to you for our next question. Our audience member uh, states very astutely, every applicant is different. Can you talk through how you can systematize a process that would work for everyone? Oh, good question. Um, for starters, you really kind of cannot. <laughs> uh, re you know, we have a couple different campaigns really outlining um, – Really, what the, the challenge was today was it income? Was it credit? Was it um, you know hadn't found a house yet? Maybe they're saving down payments. So, you know, I think a good CRM you've got to have a process for each one of those challenges, and um, you know, the, obviously the fewer the better, um, the, the simpler the better because you want your loan officers to use it and uh, and and have confidence that whatever button they push, that system is going to follow up correctly with that particular client. 
Great, thank you. Uh, Dawn, I'm going to go to, the, with, to you for the next one. And this is more of a comment than a question, but I, I'm sure you're going to have a perspective on this. Our audience, <laughs> our audience member states, many CRAs have dedicated staff who will assist the LOs and processors in coming up with a solution for the unique credit situation using the what-if simulator, Wayfinder, or both. Mm -hmm. Well, and absolutely. So those are some of the tools that um, you might be using. So it could be, become part of a process, but we're also very happy to support our, uh, all of the various CRAs in partnering with lenders to help improve credit. So again, that's, it falls right in line with what we're talking about today is using tools and we're happy to support that. Great, Dawn, let's stay with you for the next question. Our okay. audience member wants to know, can a single LO sign up for the pilot program? Um, so what we'd like to do is have the pilot program extend larger than that, and here's, here's why. A single loan officer could create their own process, but where we see the most benefit is where it's something that's systematic across a lender. And so what we're trying to do is see, because then you'll get the higher amount of volume, et cetera. So that's not to say a single loan officer can't um, create this. I point to Ben as being a fantastic example of saying, I don't need to be um, ad hoc. I can create my own system for my own um, my own loan closures. So Ben may have a comment on this as well. But for the pilot, we're really looking for something more like 20 or more loan officers. Great. Let's go to Todd. Have, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. I was going to say, Ben, do you have a, a point of view on that? Because you really took the initiative yourself to set up your processes. Yeah, you know, I, I tried to keep everything as simple as possible um you know I, I just think having you know if you can create four different scenarios and um have a if this then that with two clicks of a button and have it run behind the scenes for the loan officer that's a total win i'd like to just uh, agree with you there um the more you can automate the process as far as sending the file to your CRM or if you're bucket, however you're bucketing the borrowers, um, it really helps uh, loan officers because, again, like we talked about earlier, they really focus on what's in front of them and not necessarily the, the, the long-term picture. So if you can make it as simple as possible, one or two clicks, the borrower goes into an automated system, um, it really allows them to continue to do what they're good at. And if you have a credit specialist, it allows them to do what they're good at. Great. We've got time for a few more questions. Uh, Todd, let's go to you for this next question. Our audience member wants to ask simply, what results have you seen so far? We've seen some, some great results. Um, you know, and, and the results are going to change depending on the borrower. Sometimes if you have longer-term borrowers, your success rates are going to be a lot less um, than the shorter-term borrowers. But um, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because I was hired just to create this process. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I would say we're probably seeing a 30 to 40 percent bump in uh, capture rates, maybe a 30 percent bump in capture rates. Um, but not only are we seeing a bump there, we're seeing a bump in realtor relationships because now when we talk to realtors, they know we have a system in place that can help their credit challenge borrower. It also helps with branch recruiting. Because if you have a, a branch or a loan officer that wants to come in and they don't want to deal with the credit problems, they only want to deal with what's in front of them, now you have something in place. So this type of uh, system can really help in multiple areas. Great. Dawn, I'm going to go to you for this next question. Our audience member asks, how do you define the difference between credit expert and the credit repair programs that you advise MLOs not to use? So I would say that a lot of times the credit repair programs, um, what I hear about them is they tend to be more of a, uh, temporary is maybe not the right word, 
six, but they tend to rely more on things like uh, disputing things that may or may not be correct. Um, but credit expert is really focused on more the credit behaviors, I'd call it. So things like when should you pay down a, uh, an account, when should you open or close a loan, and really looking at things that are much longer term, much more of a um, best credit behaviors than just quickly disputing something to get it off your loan. So for us, that means it's also going to be more long term in terms of having something that's really going to be a credit improvement, not just a temporary change in a credit score. And I'd like to add to, to that if I can. Um, you know, with credit repair, typically they are just doing disputes, and a lot of times they're not legit, and they actually can do more harm than good because now your borrower has 10 dispute comments that you end up having to pay to get removed um, because they were trying to remove items that should not have been removed. Um, what you find with credit repair is borrowers will go to credit repair, but they can't really help them because the issues that they have are not something that a credit repair company can help with. If you have a charge off with the primary, like the Capital One charge off, you're not gonna win that dispute. So what you were saying, using the what if simulator, using your Wayfinder, um, it's really a, better to use the borrower's existing credit, help them improve their, uh, their behavior while also increasing their credit score. Um, we can't rely on trying to remove erroneous information because most of the time, and there are some a lot of erroneous information, but most credit repair agencies do what's called a two-point dispute where they're just validating the name and address or name and social, and, and, and that's why they're not successful. So a program like this really works with the borrower to educate them um, with their existing credit. And, you know, like I said, over time, whether it be a week or three months, hopefully they're, they're qualified. It could be longer. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is compliance. Permissible purpose is very big. Um, as far as the Fair Credit Reporting Act goes. And if you start having loan officers just send people to credit repair, now you have to worry about them sending the credit report because that's a violation. So if you have a system in place where you can internally help the borrower work with their existing credit, not issue these crappy dispute letters, but really, really help them. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that. And the compliance is a big part of that. Thank you, I appreciate that, I, I agree. Okay, well that does conclude today's program. For those of you who submitted questions, uh, someone from Credit Expert will, will get back to you as soon as possible after this program today. I do want to take this time to thank Dawn, Ben, and Todd for participating in the program, for answering your many questions. I'm sure you receive great insight and ideas from them that you'll be able to put to use in your business. Uh, again, we want to acknowledge and thank Credit Expert for today's sponsorship. We really appreciate their support. And last and certainly not least, we want to thank all of you who attended this program today. We're glad that you could take some time out of your very busy day to learn more about this topic. We're sure that you got some great ideas that you'll be able to put to good use. And we hope that you'll join us for a future web seminar brought to you by National Mortgage News and its sponsor partners. So on behalf of your host, your sponsor, and your presenters, thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you have a great day.